All praise. Oh, wait, let me get on camera. All right. Hey, Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Israel. All right. Uh, welcome to War Zone Wednesday. All right. Um, hey, look, I am uh, the brother. All right. Ra'am. All right. So all praise and glory and honor to the most high God. If Ephraim, are we live? Uh we're recording, but we're we recording. Ain't live. I mean not live. I see live on the top left screen. So like yeah, hey, this is a pre-recorded lesson, by the way. Um, so no. this is a pre-recorded lesson. So excuse the confusion. Yeah, um, man. But we get disrespectful comments to yourselves. Con, con, con. So excuse the confusion. This is a little different. Um, brothers got uh things on Wednesdays, but we still want to bring the truth out. We still want to bring this word out, all right, through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So, first and foremost, as always, all right, we want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Shem Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. All right, and as you no doubt have, have known and, and, and learned over the time with Yahweh's camp, that's all praises to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, uh, we're going to go around. Uh, uh, I am the brother Ra'am. We'll let uh, Mahar introduce himself and then Kazak. Khan, this is brother Mahar. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. This is your brother Kazak. All praises, all praises. So it's a few of us on the night, all right? And through the spirit, man, we're going to get a good edifying lesson on uh, the word worship, all right, uh, the word worship. So, um, you know, ultimately, the, the the reason why we're doing this class tonight, all right, is we want to arm arm our brothers and our sisters in this truth about um, just what what the doctrine holds, right? What the what the doctrine entails. Growing up in Christianity, growing up in Catholicism, growing up whatever doctrine you're up under, right? We 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 always find ourselves seeing that word worship. And we're tagging so many things to it. Excuse me. Excuse me. We're tagging so many things to it. Right. And we just kind of freak out when we see worship. Right. And, and the funny thing about it is, you know, as you'll see tonight, that word worship can go for a different types of people. Right. It can go for different uh, understandings. Right. It can also go to uh, and, and correlate with different um, with different meanings. And of course, uh, uh, doctrines are made out of this. Uh, people are um, unbeliefs are made out of this. Right, this whole understanding of the word or lack of understanding. All right, so it's um, you know it's our job to go out there and defend the gospel. It's our job to go out here and and, and give sense to our people. Um, you know what 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 the scriptures really entail for us to do, and what the Most High is ultimately asking of us. All right, so. Um, so uh, King Kazak, he's going to read for us tonight through the spirit, uh, um, a mighty, mighty soldier uh, with Yahweh's camp, up and coming brother. All right. So just be patient with us. As I said, this is pre-recorded. However, um, you know, it's still going to be edifying through the spirit of the most high God. So uh, Kazak, can you get me first, Peter? Uh, let's see what I want. First Peter 315. I think that's Yeah. Yeah. Get that for us real quick. I'm going to follow along too. First, no, so like give me uh Philippians 1 16 and 17. Philippians 1 16 and 17. Screen share it if you want. Go on Bible Hub and then screen share it. Come, come. Yeah, we can do that too. And if y'all hear a baby crying, man, that's my daughter. She going to bed early tonight. So so that way we can uh, uh, get this word out without any interruptions. So, uh, so yeah, let me get Philippians chapter one, verse, verse number sixteen. Con, this is the book of Philippians chapter one and verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. The one preach Christ of contention not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds read verse 17 but the other of love knowing that i am set for the defense of the gospel for the defense of the gospel right so as as israelites we believe the whole book right we believe old testament the the you know which is the torah the Tanakh, right? Your prophecies, your words, 
right? Your Psalms, Proverbs, right? We believe in that. And then we also subscribe to the quote unquote New Testament, right? So we defend the whole gospel because we get contention from who? We get contention from the Old Testament persuasion where it's just Old Testament only, right? And then we also get contention from the Christians. The, the, ironic, the irony about, behind all this is, you know, OT only brothers don't subscribe to the New Testament and then vice versa. The New Testament Christians, Christianity, they don't subscribe to what? The Old Testament or they have a lack of understanding. What we do is we marry both, right? We marry that, the Apocrypha. Of course, we also go into uh, secular history, right? Uh, uh, history, uh, even some brothers go into um, what you would say, uh, pottery and topography, right? Maps and, and brothers understand languages, things like that. So we always are defending the gospel from other believers of the gospel, right? And the main thing is to know what this Bible entails. We always talk about you have to know this Bible because you're teaching this Bible. The most High selected us from birth to come out here and teach his word. All right. So it says to it says uh, uh, to defend the gospel. And one of the ways that you defend the gospel is knowing the gospel. Right. You have to know the gospel. You have to start studying these things. If you're coming in this truth, one of the things that should be you should be doing is studying this word as best as you can. Right. Get up under some brothers. Get up under some elders and start studying this word, right? So, um, and 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 Kazak, can you also give me that first Peter 3:15, Baba Kasha? Come. It's the book of First Peter, chapter 3 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Come on. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Right, so you see how we have to answer these questions with meekness and fear, right? You'll, you'll find a lot of times, you know, when brothers are uneasy with their doctrine, they're, they're, they meet these questions with aggression. It's a defense tactic that people subconsciously employ, right? Somebody asks, this is why we have problems with people on the street when we're out there teaching, you talk to Christians, what do they do? They 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 actually lash out and they they call you names. They do these things, right? It's a it's a it's a a weakness in the doctrine that they don't know how to answer questions. So we answer the questions when someone's sure about their doctrine, when someone's sure about the understanding of the Bible. They know what Paul's talking about. They can tell you what he's going into because we study. There's a lot more of a a, a meekness. There's patience that we absorb, right? This is all going back to the fruits of the spirit. So it says, it says, uh, uh, it, it says, let me read it again. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer. We got to be ready to give an answer. If you stay in the spirit, if you stay in learning these things, if you stay studying, you're going to always be ready to give an answer. All right. So I want to bring that out as some warm up precepts, some warm up scriptures that we can employ, not just in today's lesson, but also in, also in any lesson um, or understanding you get moving forward. All right. So I'm going to share my screen real quick because this is going to be a PowerPoint style um, lesson. Right. So give me one second. Let me share my screen real quick. Go here. Boom. Let me know when y'all can see it. Come on. So like, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Salaki, my bad, my bad. That was my daughter. All right, so let's go into it, right? So what you see right here is the word worship, right? The word worship, 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 worship. We see worship, and what do we say, right? Matter of fact, can I present this? There's a way I can't present this, right? Slideshow. Let me see, slideshow, boom. 
Wait. Oh my gosh, hold on one second. Can y'all see my screen? Go. All right, hold on. All right, I'm gonna just go through it. This PowerPoint is 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 tripping. Hold on. Custom slideshow. No. Setup slideshow. It should be able to just let me just share this. Nope, that ain't it. All right, we're just going to work through it. Y'all bear with me tonight. All right, y'all bear with me. All right, so the word worship, right? All right, so here's the, 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 the idea of this whole understanding, right? It says, this lesson is geared to show the different types of worship in the Old Testament and New Testament. How doctrines, doctrines are created off the understanding of this word. Who qualifies for worship? That's another point that we're going to uh, go into. Who actually qualifies for worship? Because not just the Most High God received worship, right? Not just Christ received worship, all right? And the historical climate of early church fathers is influence on worship, all right? That's a lot, but I'm, I basically, we're going to go into some understanding on the word worship, how the early church fathers influence on worship, and how that shaped doctrines, Okay. And of course, who qualifies and what the understanding in the New Testament, Old Testament. All right. So my next slide. All right. This is the definition of worship in Webster's Dictionary. You can look it up. OK. And we're going to see the 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 differences on what Webster shows versus what the scriptures show versus what was actually acted out and how all these things can uh, you can circumnavigate. Right through these understandings, through these words. And then, of course, we're going to let God be true and every man a liar. So it says, uh, a person of importance used as a title for various officials as magistrates and some mayors. So you know how you come into the courtroom and they say what? All rise, right? You're giving reverence to who? The judge. You see what I'm saying? Um, when you go into, uh, as a matter of fact, right, when you uh, are under arrest they'll say that you are under you're under the uh jurisdiction of that that officer right and everything that he tells you to do you have to comply right so different people that are over you right receive a form of worship in some way shape form or fashion it says reverence offered a divine being or supernatural power that's the web that's the worship that we all uh adhere to I'm going to read that part again. This is the worship that we all grew up understanding. Reverence offered a divine being or supernatural power. So the Most High God would qualify for this, this form of worship, right? Number two, an act of expressing such reverence. Okay, an act of expressing such reverence. Number three, a form of religious practice with its creed and ritual. This is where you would get religious uh, uh, acts, right? Religious acts. This is these are rituals. Um, and then number four, extravagant respect or admiration for for or devotion to an object of esteem. So you you know how you have idols, right? These are the objects. You got a cobblestone, right? An idol. That's an object. You got a Buddha, right? These are idols. These are objects. Even uh, the Virgin Mary, right? They have a statue. That's an object also called an idol. They bow down to it and they worship these things, right? As a matter of fact, I believe some of the uh, ancient, uh, even the Moabites, um, and even uh, when you go into uh, African spirituality, what do they do? They worship the ancestors, okay? Okay. Everybody following? Even when you go into, uh, uh, like we said, the Moabites, um, you know, sometimes you'll see them leave uh, like food next to tombstones, right? They're worshiping their ancestors. So, so it's not um, a far-fetched thing to to have nations, right? Other nations uh, uh, bring up their own ancestors and, and qualify them for a form of worship. Again, so it's a reverence offered. A divine, a divine being of supernatural power, an act of expressing such reverence, okay? So what's that act of expressing such reverence? You bow down, 
right? You, you, you dance, you may sing. What else? Uh, sacrifices. We're going to get into all that, right? Um, so that's Webster's Dictionary, a form of religious practice with its creed and ritual. Another word for creed would be like oaths or, or laws or, uh, you know, you take an, um, a, a vow, right? Um, so anything can be an idol. Anything can be worshipped when you look at it from a de the definition of Webster. All right. Next slide. It says this is the compact Bible dictionary. All right. If you are a Hebrew Israelite, right, whether you're a teacher or, or you're not a teacher, I encourage brothers and sisters to, uh, to to get a compact Bible dictionary. Very good. Right. It's a good resource. Matter of fact, I got one here. Right. Zondervan's compact Bible dictionary. OK. All right. So this is the definition. It says bow down to prostrate or do obsequence to the honor, reverence, and uh, homage paid to superior beings or powers. Let me read that part again. It says homage paid to superior beings or powers, whether men, angels, or God. Very important. It says use especially of divine honors paid to a deity then it says, when given to God involves acknowledgement of divine perfections, may be private or public, involving a cultus. Then they give you, listen to this, it gives you four stages of development in the Bible. Okay. And if you're at home listening to this, write down these four stages. All right. Write down these four stages. And, and, and we're going we're gonna to come right back to slide number three. Once we go through most of this lesson and, I, and there's a method behind this, I want people to understand there's different forms or, or tiers or hierarchies of worship. Right. We have different hierarchies of worship and only the most high God gets the highest form of worship. OK, only the most high God receives sacrifices. Only the most high God has an altar built to him. Right. Only the most high God received alms in in the, in the form of praise right only the most high god they burnt incense right all these things right this is what it's talking about the highest form of praise or worship went to the most high god all right all right so so speaking of altars all right i want to get this first one uh kazak can you give me genesis 12 and 7 let's get an example of Altars being built, um, and, and incenses being lit, and sacrifices and things of that nature. Let's get Genesis 10, 12 and seven. It's the book of Genesis, chapter twelve and verse seven. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh appeared unto Abram and said, "Unto thy seed will I give this land." And there builded he an altar unto Yahweh. He did what? And there build builded he an altar unto Yahweh. You see that? So so understanding this, right? A altar was built for the most high God, right? An altar was built. Nothing wrong with that, right? He built an altar, an altar to the most high God. Come on. Who appeared unto him. All right. So the most high God, an altar was built. So this qualifies the most high God for the first form of worship. It says building altars, right? Burning incense and sacrifices. All right, let's get 1 Kings 11 and 6. Let's get 1 Kings chapter 11, verse number 6. Con, this is the book of First Kings, chapter eleven and verse six. Mm -hmm. And Solomon did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and went not fully after Yahweh, as did David his father. Read. Then did Solomon build in high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab. So he, the, the Most High, um, Salakia, Solomon, right, the King of Israel. 
built a high place for Kimash. That's a God for the Moabites. Okay. So you're seeing an altar being built for a deity of another nation. This is a form of worship. Read. In the hill that is before Jerusalem mm -hmm. and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. You see that? So, so these abominations, these, these other gods, right? The Moabite God, the Ammonite God, uh, uh, our beloved king, King Solomon built idols, right? And, and temples and places of worship for these other deities, right? Let's also get uh, Leviticus 4 and 7. Let's get Leviticus 4 and 7. So we had altars being built, right? Let's get Leviticus chapter 4, verse 7. It's the book of Leviticus chapter 4, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before Yahweh. You see that? So the priest, right, was, was taking this blood, right, the sin, these sin offerings, right? And he's putting it on the horns of the altar. So there was an altar. We had the tabernacle, right? And then it says, of sweet incense before the Lord. Read on. Which is in the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All praises, right? So you see it again, right? These these sacrifices, because then we just read that part as well. Number one, sacrifices was given to a deity. Now, other nations sacrificed to their gods, whether it be people, whether it be unclean animals, whether it be clean animals, whatever the case may be. Even the other nations understood when you sacrifice to your uh, to your own deity, you're calling that the most high of your nation, right? So even we call the most high, right? Or uh, we call him the most high, name is Yahweh, and we sacrifice. No other person in the scriptures was worthy for sacrifice but Yahweh, right? Let's make that very clear. So you're seeing altars and incense and sacrifices. For who? Only the most high got these. All right, last one. Let's get Leviticus 10 and 1. The book of Leviticus, chapter 10, of verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before Yahweh, which he commanded them not. You see that? So we understand what happened with Aaron's two sons as they was offering strange incense, strange fires. They end up getting destroyed. But the point is, right, how they worship the Most High wasn't just, you know, uh, uh, song and dance and shouting and getting the Holy Spirit where you're convulsing, right? You worship the Most High God in incense, sacrifices, building altars, taking care of the altars, things like that. All right. So that's number one, right? Patriarchs worshiped by building altars, burning incense and sacrificing. Number two, it says organized worship in temples, ritual with complex ritual and system of sacrifices. OK, synagogue, which began during the exile. So, again, you're seeing a, a an organized worship in temples. Right. So when you grew up in the Christian church, right, we had organized uh, worship in our churches. Right. Even though it was on the left hand side, even we understood how to worship God was to to gather yourselves in temples or synagogues, <clears throat> right? Um, of course, uh, ritual, right? So with complex complex ritual. So if you understand how you did sacrifices, it was a ritual behind it. How you would wash yourself, right? Cleanse yourself as a as a Levite, going into the holy of holies, going into the temple, going into the con the, the tabernacle. You had to be pure outside and inside. Or you was going to die, right? It was just that simple. If you went in there and you was unclean, you was burnt up, all right? So there was a ritual. You bathed yourself. As a matter of fact, when brothers come to camp, when we come to these feast days, these high holy days, when our sisters come in, they got to make sure that they are they are clean, 
A woman can't be on her flower coming amongst the congregation, right? She's not, she's not, she's she's out of order, right? A man can't come into the congregation unclean. It's just, that's just how it is. So there's a ritual. Before you come in, you bathe yourself. You bathe, you know, you wash your clothes. You come in clean. These are all rituals. There's a ritual when we keep the feast days, the high holy days. We eat the Passover, right? And there's a way you cook the lamb. There's a way that you 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 season the lamb. You have to have a what they would call a Seder meal, right? Meaning you have the bitter herb, unleavened bread, and the lamb. These are all rituals we're talking about. When it's uh, tabernacles, right, what are we doing? You're out there in, in the tent, right, in the, in the Sakat. These are feast days when it's the, the feast of uh, uh, trumpets, right, first fruits. All these things have a ritualistic uh, um, understanding behind it. Right. It says a system, a system of this is a very key word, a system of sacrifices. You just don't sacrifice anywhere you at. Right. Anybody ain't just sacrificing once you have the Levitical priesthood established. OK. Let uh, let me get a precept with that. Let me get uh, Exodus 34. Let me get Exodus 34 and 14. Exodus 34, verse 14. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 34, and verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous power. You see that? So even you don't worship other gods. All right? You don't give reverence to another god. You're not even really uh, dealing with their temples. You're not dealing with their... They incense, you're not dealing with the uh, altars, none of that, right? You go into some of these um, other nations, they'll have uh, other deities, you know, that they uh, sacrifice this food to or cook this food to. I, I don't eat there, right? Because, read it again, because I, that last part, it says, for God, for thou shalt worship no other God for Yahweh whose name is Jealous, is a jealous power. He's a jealous power, right? So let's get also, let's get First Chronicles 6, 48. First Chronicles chapter 6, verse 48. Okay. And again, this is, the reason why we're going here, right, is I want to show uh, uh, the viewers, right, just what it means to worship that you just don't like i get like as kazak's getting this understanding i mean this uh scripture i want to give the understanding that you're not just out there just praying like uh our our uh jesus loves you mr hebrew what's the i don't even know that brother's name but the brother that y'all been seeing coming by scoffing the camp dancing in the middle of the street with his shirt off and and just you know bugged out of his mind that's not how you worship god Right, not properly. All right. Okay. There's got to be work behind it. There's got to be a service behind it. All these things takes effort. You see how it says a system of sacrifices? Well, what goes into a system is 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 uh what you would call execution, but it's also strategic, right? You have people that have systems and it's made them millions of dollars. That means there was a lot of uh thought that went into this. A lot of uh, sacrifice, a lot of things that went into this. It's the same thing when it comes to the Most High God. You just don't, you know, you just don't thank the Most High every other Wednesday, right? And then you say, I worship God. No, watch watch how the Levites did that. Read, read that. Con, it's the book of First Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 48. Their brethren also, the Levites, were appointed unto all manner of service mm -hmm. of the tabernacle of the house of the most high. You see that? So when you want you want to talk about organized worship in temples, you had the Levites. Their job was to do the service of God. That was their job, right? This is where you get the tithe coming from, right? Because they didn't have land. So, of course, we looked out for our brothers and gave them a tenth of our increase. And as a result, they did the service of God, right, in the temple. All right, it says, it says, and were appointed unto all, all manner of service of the tabernacle. Again, that goes into that complex ritual and system, right? 
of sacrifices because their job was to do what? To sacrifice for atonements and burnt offerings and wave offerings and sheaves and things of that nature. Pronouncing you clean, saying, oh, you know, um, uh, pronouncing you unclean. You can't come into the congregation if the priest ain't pronounced you clean. These all go back to a ritual and system. All right, last one for this one. Let's get uh, 1 Chronicles 9 and 13. It's the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 13. And their brethren, heads of the house of their fathers, a thousand and seven hundred and three score, very able men for the work of the service of the house of the Most High. Now, that last part is what, what I really want to highlight. It said very able men for the work of the service of the house of God. Right. The work of able men that was able to do the work for the house of the Most High God. This all goes back to forms of worship. You can worship God just by your labor. Right. You can worship the most high by what? Doing flyer missions. Right. Going out there and laboring. You at the gas pump. You see your brother, you know, at the next pump over. Hey, let me give you this flyer. I, yeah, we Israelites. Let me ask you, you believe in God. Right. And just go right into it. Right. Defend the gospel. Do the work of an evangelist. OK, so able men, a lot of men are able Right. But they just refuse to do it properly. They wait until Saturday to get this word out when we at camp. Right. But if you able, you're able to do this thing anywhere you at. These are forms of worshiping God. Let's get number three. It says Christian. Christians consi consisting of preaching, reading of scripture, prayer, singing and baptism. All right. Singing. Consisting of preaching, reading of scripture, right? So these are all also forms of worship. Reading, preaching, singing, baptizing, prayer. These are all forms of worship, right? Let's get Psalm 96 and 1. Let's get Psalm chapter 96, verse 1. It's the book of Psalm chapter 96, verse 1. Come on. Oh, sing. Oh, unto, what? Oh, sing. Oh, sing. Come on. Unto Yahweh, a new song. Sing unto Yahweh, all the earth. Sing unto Yahweh, bless his name. It says, bless his name. Right? Come on. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Read on. Declare his glory among the heathen. His wonders among all people. For Yahweh is great and greatly to be praised. So when we talk about praising the Most High, right? A form of praising God is singing. This is a this is a scripture we, we want to bring to about singing. Sing uh, the blessings of the Most High. Sing about the salvation, right? These are forms of worship. Read on. He is to be feared. Above all gods. You see that? Read on. Verse, in that verse 5. Out. Come. For all the gods of the nations are idols. So all these other gods that we hear about, you read about, you study, and even we as people have gods or other gods in our own life. We have our own idols that we, you know, you come in this truth and you understand what these idols are. They become clear to you. And then you, you know, you take care of that, right? You kill those idols, like it tells you in Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, right? You burn those idols, right? Read on. But Yahweh made the heavens. You see that? So we, we, we actually understand that there's a difference between some of these other nations' gods and, and the Most High God, Yahweh. And the Most High called these other nations' gods, whether it be Moloch, or, or damn Kimosh or Kamash um, abominations, right? So these other these other gods are abominable, right? Uh, last one, uh, Salakit. Now that was it on that. And then let's get uh, 
alms, right? So number four, it says the Lord's Supper and alms giving, right? So this is in your compact Bible dictionary. All right, give me that uh, Matthew 6, verse 1. Give me that Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. All right. It's the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men mm -hmm. to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Come. So let's just start right there. We're going to read down in verse 4, but I want to go verse by verse. By verse. And you see Yahweh is saying, listen, right? Take heed, right? It says that ye do not your alms before men. You know how many people uh, are, are doing righteous acts and, and doing it to be seen by men? Taking pictures, putting it on their social media, right? You're going to be seen by men? That's fine, right? But, 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 it, says, but it says, otherwise you have no reward of your father which is in heaven because you're doing it to be seen by men. You want the glory instead of Yahweh getting the glory. Now, we just read earlier how the Most High is a jealous power, right? Read verse 2. Verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. So don't let everyone know, right? I mean, if they see you, cool, but you ain't broadcasting, you ain't going live, none of that, right? Read on. As the hypocrites do, in the synagogues and in the streets. So you even had people that were hypocrites that were doing these righteous alms and they were doing it in the place of worship, right? Look at me, I'm a good guy. I'm giving alms, I pray eight times a day, I fast you know, three times a week, I'm, I'm doing all these things, right? I'm, I'm, I'm in the synagogue every Shabbat, all these things, right? Um, uh, but of course, Yahweh is calling them hypocrites because a lot of these men did all these things to be seen, to be seen as righteous or worthy men, but they were hypocrites at the same time because behind closed doors, they weren't really doing that. They weren't really uh, uh, worthy of giving those alms, right? Read on. That they may have glory of men. You Verily. They want the glory of men. Oh, you a righteous dude. Hey, man, I wish, you know, what's the old saying? If I had your hand, I'd cut mine off, All right? You have yeah, brothers brother saying that, uh, um, you know, so it's just, Yahweh was just trying to give a parallel or an understanding that people that were actually out there saying that they was righteous and they were doing these things in the synagogues, in the place and location of worship, were actually hip hypocritical. Not all of them, but he's just giving you two extremes, the hypocrisy, the hypocrites of that, right? Um, read on, I... Come, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And their reward is what? To be seen by men. Congratulations, you seen by men, right? Read verse three and four. Verse three, but when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right, right hand doeth. Come on. Meaning don't that, that, tell everybody, Right? Hit a brother up. You know, there's been times where brothers hit me up on the low. Hey, you know, I'm just making sure you're good. Hey, you need some money, right? You, you know, things like that. And vice versa. You know, you hit brothers up. Hey, look, I know you just kind of going through something. Let me help, right? Here, here's some money. Come out to camp. I know gas is expensive. Look, we would rather see you at camp, right? So don't let don't let everybody know, though. You're not in the group chat. In your camp, you're not in the uh, uh, social media showing receipts of you sending brothers and sisters money. Your reward, you're going to have it, right? Look at verse 4. Come, on, verse 4. That thine alms may be in secret. It said your alms is done in secret. This is how you worship God, right? Giving alms in secret, come on. And thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. Because the Most High is a jealous God. You gave the Most High all the glory and credit by not adding it to yourself and not pumping your chest and sticking your chest out saying, look what I did. Right? 
it, the, the glory and all that praise goes to the most high because you've actually understood the bigger picture, which is to help your brother to give alms to your sister. All right. So that's the compact Bible dictionary of worship. And you see they broke it down into four different subgroups. All right. Let's move on to the next slide. All right. So it says examples of worship. Here's the examples of worship. All right. You can worship of gods or goddesses. You heard of uh, uh, Ishtar, right? She was a she was a goddess, right? When you go into Samaramis and, and Tammuz and uh, Diana, right? All these different deities. We just read about Kamash and 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 the, the Ammonite uh, the Ammonite god uh, um, uh, Molech. Where right? there's, there's there's a there's a whole bunch. White Jesus. That's another uh, god that people worship, right? So one of them is the examples of, of worship is the worship of gods and goddesses. Uh, let's get 1 Corinthians 8 and 5. Let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. For though there be that are called gods, mm -hmm whether in heaven or in earth you see that so you have gods in heaven the alahayim that's that those are gods right and see the christians the christians are so far gone from this understanding that they don't understand that angels are are gods or deities abraham isaac and jacob were called gods the israelites were also called gods and it's the same hebrew word alahayim or what you would say Elohim, right? So there's gods, right? Then you have the most high God. The most high God receives the most high form of worship. Con. Right? Read, read on. Con, in parentheses, as there be gods many and as lords there be many. What? As there be gods many. So you have gods in heaven and then you have gods on the earth. Satan is a god. Right. It tells you that he's the God of this world. Right. You have, uh, like we said, on this earth, you have the, the actual other nations. They have their own deities that they worship and bow down to and and, and all that. We Bell and the dragon. Right. It, it got so bad for the Babylonians that they were faking that their gods were eating food. Right. And they would eat the food themselves. Hmm. So there's gods all over. Right. Read on. Verse six, mm -hmm. but to us, there is but one God. You see that? We call him Yahweh. There is one. Well, anytime you see there is, see, context is key. Because there's, you know, somebody may scoff and say, well, what God is this? Because you said there are many gods. But look at the context. It says, but to us, there is but one God. And it says who it is. Read. The Father. Mm-hmm. Of whom are all things. So now you have one God, which is the Father, Yahweh. Come on. And we in him. Come on. And one Lord. And one Lord. So now there's a, there's a distinction. Come so on. a lot of you Trinitarians got to deal with this scripture right here. That's right. you have one God, that's the Father. And then you have one Lord, which you would say Adonai or Adawan, right? Which is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Come on. One Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, by whom are all things, and we by him. You see that? So all things are by Yahweh Shai, but even he has the father name is Yahweh. Okay? So worship of gods and goddesses, right? You got different gods, different goddesses. Let's get that uh, Satan, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, right? 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. They said, you know, you, you can read that. Let me just find it real quick. Uh, the God of this world, right? Who is he? Read that out. It's the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. You see that? So so who blinds the the, the eyes, right? Uh, or the minds 
of the Israelites. Let mm. us cut them off from being a nation that the name mm. of Israel be no more, right? Going to Psalm 83. You're looking at all these other nations, right? But chiefly the Edomite nation, the so-called Caucasian, right? They they have the chief, right? So like the most high will use Jacob, Satan will use the Edomite, right? Esau, right? So the God of this world, you can say is Satan, but he uses a nation of people to carry out his will, which we would say, right, is the Edomite. All right. So he blinded the, the minds of them which believe not. Come on. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, who is the image of the most high, should shine unto them. You see that? So now we understand, right, that, that Satan has a plan which is to blind the, the minds of many. All right, let's get Numbers 25, verse 1. Numbers 25 and 1. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 25 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Come on, verse 2. Verse 2. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. You see that? So the Israelites fell into idolatry, which is spiritual whoredom, by sacrificing to the gods of the Moabite. Now, we just read earlier, and in the PowerPoint, you'll see that even uh, um, a sacrifice to another deity is a form of worship. One, last time I checked, matter of fact, hope stay where you at, uh, cause I, I want to get Exodus 20. It says, this is Exodus 20 and two, verse three. It says, thou shalt have no other gods, plural, before me, All right? That's the law, that's the 10 commandments. Do not have any other gods before Yahweh. Anytime you worship, another, you can't worship two gods, right? You can't say, I love the Moabite God, right? And I also love Yahweh. Matter of fact, about a year and a half ago, we were on um, on Glenwood Avenue on a Friday night class, a Friday night camp, right? And we met these sisters. I'm not sure who was all there, but I remember talking to these sisters. Their dad was, was an Israelite, probably from Judah, and their mother was Elam, right? Persian. And... Um, you know, I'm talking to them about, you know, just what spiritual connection that they had. Like, who do you subscribe to? They grew up Christian. And then when they went to their mother's house, right, they was on to that Hindu, right? And it was just confusing. So as they got older, they end up mixing the two, rel the, the two religions, right, together. And they had their own thing going. You can't do that. You, you can't do that. And they were Israelites because their father was Jake. Right. And they ended up marrying and they actually did with uh, um, uh, your, 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 your boy Constantine was up to. Right. Let me let me mix everything together. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. All right. All right. So so where we at? Where we at? Uh, Exodus, uh, no, Numbers, right? Numbers, yeah, Numbers 25 and verse Go back two. to that. Yeah, go back to Numbers 25. Come on. We'll take it from the top. Uh, two. Give me verse 2. Come on. Numbers chapter 25 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. So that's a key word, right? They bowed down to their gods. This is going to be a theme when we go into the definitions of worship through these concordances and these languages, you're going to see bowing down as a form of worship. All right. And then get me verse three. Come verse three. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor and the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel. Yes. You see that? That's right. Because he is a jealous God. Right. That anger kicked in. It's like it's no different than a man finding out his his woman's, you know, cheating on. Him, right. Messing with some other guy. 
right? It's going to be a fire that's kindled in that brother. All right. <clears throat> All right. So let's get to the next one, right? That next bullet. It says worship services are held daily, right? Services, right? So like we read in First Chronicles 6 and 48 and First Chronicles 9 and 13, the Levites had the services of what? Of the temple, the worship services, all the ritual things, right? All the, the actual daily uh, work that had to be done through the through the tabernacle and ultimately through the first and second temple, all right? Those services. All right, number three, this is the examples of worship. The media's worship of celebrities. The media's worship of celebrities. So the way that they, they worship celebrities now. Oh, boy. Right? Shoot, man, they have followers on Instagram. God. Right? Uh, remember Michael Jackson? Remember when he stood for like five minutes in, in England, one of those shows he did? Was that God. Moonwalker? Yep. I think it was God. the Moonwalker. It was it was one of those videos he was, had, right? Yeah, I think it was one of the uh, award shows or something like that. And he had like Edomites just passing out, God. being being stretched on a stretcher. They had they couldn't stay there. They look they seen Michael Jackson and he was like a god. Right? Hey, he was a hey, god. Sal Salaki. Go ahead, King. Salaki, you remember hearing about um Selena? How Selena, um, yeah. Yeah, her fan worshipped her so much he ended up killing her, I think. That's right. And they said she had they had shrines. They had, they had, they had found shrines in Selena's uh killer. Right, the, the home of Serena's uh, Selena's killer, they had shrines. Right? You hear about these things. People see these celebrities and they worship them and they're infatuated with them. You know, um, I mean, I, I remember when I was like in ninth grade, I, I met Deion Sanders and, you know, I was like starstruck, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, yo, that's Deion. Right. <laughs> you, see, you see Kobe, you see Shaq. When I, you know, I'm coming from so Southern California, you see these brothers. And you know, you like in eighth grade, ninth, tenth grade, and then you see these brothers, and it's like they bigger than life. And and the media, you know, celebrities and all that, that they have that profound, um, they have that profound uh, effect and impact on people. You know, a lot of times the young girls when they teenagers, you know, uh, they'll see their favorite teenage heartthrob, and they. The whole mall, right? They're screaming for these, uh, for these other these these celebrities. So y'all get what I'm saying, right? The media's worship of celebrities, Jay Z, Fifty Cent, Michael Jackson. Um, the list goes on. Janet Jackson. I mean, you can go all through the the, the annals of time, and and even uh, some of these old kings, right? Nebuchadnezzar was looked at as a god. Um, you know, so so you get what I'm saying, right? The media's worship of celebrities, the Kardashians, um, you know, so so there you go, right? Now, how about women worship their husbands? And this is a touchy, touchy subject when we say the woman worships of their husbands, because again, that word worship is uh is, is sensitive, it's a very sensitive word to our people, right? Women see the word worship to their husbands. And they they get mad. Nah, you ain't God. You ain't you ain't Jesus, right? I ain't worshiping you, right? <laughs> hey, let's just call it like it is, right? God. These women, God. you know, they don't look at it as in paying reverence to their husband or paying homage to their husband. They look at it as I'm not worshiping no other person but Jesus or God, right? No, but that's not that's not the case, right? Um, I'm going to show you something. Let's get 1 Peter 3 and 5. All right, let's get 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 5. All you daughters of Sarah, take heed to this. All right? Take heed to this because, you know, understand that your foremothers also uh, worship their husbands. It's the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 5. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in the most high. So they trusted in the most. Listen, listen to this. Read it. Read it again. Read it slow. Con. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also 
who trusted in the most high and they trusted in the most high come on adorned themselves mm -hmm. being in subjection unto their own husbands you see that they are subjection unto their own husbands right they they they're under another man their own man their own husband their their leader this goes in the first corinthians 11 the head of the woman is the man right read on verse six come kind of verse six even as sarah obeyed abraham mm -hmm. calling him lord or calling him, uh, what? calling him lord now how many of our women right <laughs> are are calling their husband lord right they're not doing that of course you know you got some some women that who trust in god like it says in verse five and they do call their husband lord whether they want to say adawan adonai or just lord in english right they understand that they're paying reverence to that man that the most high placed over him over her right to lead her but of course you know sometimes our women have that it's hard for them to give that that understanding up it's hard for them to, to give that power up she didn't went through you know school 10 12 13 years paid herself through school got her own job her own car she ain't trying to do all that right but of course if you're led by god women ain't got no problem being under their husbands right calling him lord come on whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement with any amazement right and of course the men let's get let's get the men because i know uh, it may be some women you got to read the men's part too don't 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 leave out verse seven so let's get verse seven <laughs> God, this is uh, this first peter chapter three and verse seven likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life mm -hmm. that your prayers be not hindered be not hindered right so so understanding that right of course the man treats his wife right with that with that uh honor right and and knowing that she is the weaker vessel he is over her right and it says being heirs together it's going to take a a a a, a co-op for y'all to get the kingdom right but uh, but again this is going back to 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 reverence and worship right of course children can worship their mother and father when it says honor your father and mother right and then the last one i want to get is men can worship their elders right men can worship their uh, matter of fact before we go before we move forward I want to get a few more. I can't believe I forgot this. Let's get Ruth 2 and 10. Let's get Ruth chapter 2, verse 10. Go on, I want to get a few more precepts about the, the wife paying homage to her husband. Right? Ruth chapter 2, verse 10. The book of Ruth chapter 2 and verse 10. Salakia. Verse 10. Then she fell on her face. She did what? Then she fell on her face. So that means she bowed, she bowed down. She fell on her face. Come on. Come on. And bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? You see that? So even Ruth, right? bowed down to to her eventual husband boaz right and saying why have i found grace in thy sight so she even she understood well how important it was right to to be in subjection and be under and in a form of way worship her own husband let's get first kings 1 and 16. It's the book of first Kings chapter one, verse 16. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. 
It said Bathsheba did what? And Bathsheba bowed. And Bathsheba bowed. This is the wife of David. And Bathsheba bowed. That's why when we went to that, um, we went to that first Peter three and five. It talks about not just the daughter, not just Sarah, right? She was like the standard, right? Eve wasn't doing that. Eve was not bowing down to Adam. She was she was on a whole different, you know, vibration, right? But Bathsheba, right? Sarah, Ruth, so forth and so forth. So it says Bathsheba bowed and did obscience unto the king, right? Read on. And the king said, what wouldest thou? What what is thou? Let's get the last one. I want to get First Samuel 26, 23. 1 Samuel 26, 23. All right. So these, you know, our sisters, y'all believe in the most high God. And you got husbands. Hey, if you at home and you watching this, you might need to think about how, how I can get off my uh, you know, that pride, that pride. Our women ain't doing none of that because of the pride, right? Come, this is the book of First Samuel, chapter 26, verse 23. Uh-huh. Yahweh render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For Yahweh delivered thee into my hand today. But I would not stretch forth mine hand against the against Yahweh's anointed. And that's not what I'm talking about. That's actually a good scripture about how King David would not touch Saul. God. Um, hold up. What did I say? First uh, Samuel 26, 23. That's what we got. God. Yeah. No, that's not what I want. Hold on. I want. I want. No, I want um dang. Salaki, hold on one second. I'm gonna get it right here. Come on. Let me get it. Let me get it. I wrote it down. Let me get let me get you read first Samuel twenty six twenty three, right? Come. Right, hold on, that's not what I need. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me look it up real quick. I'm gonna find it. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, Lockie. That's it. It's kind of it. Kind of goes into how um, a lot of us have fallen victim to Esau's kingdom and how we view ourselves, view our wives, women view their husbands. Um, it's kind of just kind of taking our our culture and our heritage and pushed it aside. Come twenty five twenty three. First Samuel twenty five twenty three. That's a good point. I, that's a good point. It's the book of First Samuel chapter twenty five verse twenty three. Mm -hmm. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face mm -hmm. and bowed herself to the ground. Read on. And fell at his feet. And did what? And fell at his feet. So now you see another an, another account where the king King David, right? Uh, his wife uh, also worshipped, right? Bowed down to herself to the ground and fell at his feet, right? Read on. And said, "Upon me, my lord, upon me, let this iniquity be, and let thine hand, Slakia, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience mm -hmm. and hear the words." Of thine handmaid. So even even you know King David's wife understood how important it is to pay homage and 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 prostrate herself and and bow down and show reverence to her to her own husband. Right? We need we need more of that in the household. Brothers, you know, 
especially you know Israelite men, we get we get attacked from all parts of this walk in this in, this, in life, whether it's jobs, whether it's camp, whether it's your family, your friends. The last thing we want to do is come home and have to handle uh, someone else, right? You don't want to handle a woman, right? You, you you actually want to come home and have a sense of peace. A lot of times, you know, it's it's like it's round twelve when you get home, right? Round four, you know, went through work, you didn't, you made it home without the police stopping you, you didn't made it home without the gangs getting on you, all these things, right? Last thing you want is uh, your wife, you know. Uh, uh, bickering at you, right? There's, there's got to be a sense of peace, right? When you come home from a hard day's work, right? It ain't just about food, right? Oh, I made you a plate. Well, I mean, thanks for the plate. I, I do need to eat, but also, you know, as Israelite men, we don't really have the, the, <laughs> the a lot of uh, uh, respect when it comes to life, right? We don't have respect when it comes to life. Everybody disrespects us. So, as a wife, right? It might make sense for our, our women to build their kings up at home by doing these things, right? Doing these things, showing them that 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 respect, having that worship. But it ain't just like you know uh, that's all we teaching right now, right? We also going to teach how the men worship their own elders, right? So even if you are uh, married with children, you also have to show that same reverence and respect to your elders, to the men that rule over you, right? We're going to show that. All right, let's get, um, give me the book of 1 Kings 1 and 23. It's the book of 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 23. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan, the prophet. Mm-hmm. And when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. His face to the ground, right? So you're seeing a prophet, right? He's able to hear the words from the Most High God. He still paid his reverence and homage to the king, bowed himself to the ground. Read verse 24. Verse 24. And Nathan said, My Lord, O king, hast thou said, Adonijah shall reign after me and he shall sit upon my throne. Right. So understanding this is right before King David was going to pass that torch over to Solomon. Right. Even Nathan, the prophet, bowed down himself with his face to the ground. Is he worshiping another God when he's doing this? No. Right. Uh -uh. He's not. Right. He's just paying homage. Right. To 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 the king. But he's not sacrificing the King David. This is in the name of King David. I'm going to kill this bullock, right? In the name of King David, we're going to, you know, sacrifice this lamb and this ram and put the blood in the name. You know, no, it's not like that, right? He didn't He didn't qualify for those forms of worship that we saw moving forward earlier. It just said he bowed himself down. That's it, right? Let's get uh, 1 Chronicles 29 and 20. 1 Chronicles 29 and 20. And if you can see, I really want to hammer home and then we're going to explain it. So I'm going to work it backwards. I'm giving you all the scriptures now and then we're going to go into the definitions and show how they are different. I got presets we're going to bring out to go into that as well. How are these things different? Well, well, if they bow down because somebody right who, who don't know the Bible, they can get a hold of this Bible and say this whole Bible is full of uh, paganism. Right, I don't and, and, and idolatry. If they don't understand Hebrew words and Greek words and what they what the definition is behind it, so let's get First Chronicles twenty nine and verse twenty. Watch this. The book of First Chronicles chapter twenty nine verse twenty. And David said to all the congregation, "Now bless Yahweh, your God." Mm -hmm. And all the congregation bless Yahweh, God of their fathers. So they blessed the, the Most High God, come on. And bowed down their heads. And they bowed down their heads, come on. And worshiped Yahweh. Uh huh. And the king. And who? And the king. So they worshiped the Most High God and King David. So wait a minute. Was that, was anything wrong with that? No. There's nothing wrong with that because they're giving a reverence. They're giving the, the, the actual just due respect, 
that the Most High's anointed God deserved. Okay, so you have to be very un you have to be very careful when having these conversations about uh, uh, worship and and bowing down and things like that. As a matter of fact, I try to make sure just me, right? I'm not saying everybody got to do this, but when I greet brothers, I bow I bow so slightly and, and salute brothers. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Barakata, right? Bowing down to the brothers. That don't make me an idolater. That don't make me someone that's worshiping brothers. I don't worship Kazat when I greet them, but I make sure that I show that reverence and that respect. I definitely do it for the uh, for the elders and the priests, right? Because these are the men that rule over us. And you know, unfortunately, a lot of brothers don't have that. You know, we know the sisters don't carry that weight or that understanding. And that's fine. Hopefully, this 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 uh, this lesson will help you come around. But also the brothers as well. Man, I ain't I ain't bowed down to no other man. Hell, no, I'm a man too, right? Scripture. Last time I said I checked, the scripture said, "Honor the hoary head. Do not revile the gods." Those gods goes back to your elders, right? Do not revile it. Let's matter of fact. You know where that's at, cause I. Uh, la uh. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Do not revile the gods. That's a law, right? Let me see. I'm going to pull it up real quick. Because uh, let's get that word revile as well. Revile. Right. Let's get uh, da, 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 Exodus 22, 28. It says, I can read it. I got it. It says, thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. So that word revile is the Hebrew word. Kalal, which is um, abate, right? Uh, causatively, make light, literally swift, sharp, vile, abate, uh, move, make somewhat, esteem, curse, okay? So the biblical usage is curse, all right? Despise, abate it, ease, all right? So you understand what it's saying is, do not curse, right? Uh, um, uh, the gods. Uh, that word is Allahim, Elohim. Then it says, "Nor curse the ruler of thy people." So even your elders, your rulers, in our camp, we got priest Yakana, we got elders of Kwan, mighty elders, mighty brothers that's leading the camp, right? We're not to abate, right, or 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 despise them, nor curse the ruler of thy people. So even your elders are called uh, gods or Allahim, and you're supposed to treat them with the up due respect. All right, so, yeah, and that's a law. That's a law. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you go on, if you if you're going against your elders' uh, directions, you just broke the law. Especially if they're telling you to do the right thing. Now, if they're telling you to to sin, then of course, right? We're not sinning. We're not in sin. We're not going to condone sin, right? Priest ain't going to tell you to commit a sin. But if he tell you to start, you know, go hold post over here at camp and you acting like you don't want to do it, well, you just broke the law, right? Elder tells you, hey, I need you to do this for me, X, Y, and Z, con, right? You do what he tell you to do. All right, so these are the examples of worship. All right, hopefully brothers is taking notes, sisters is taking notes, all right? The name. It says the origin and etymology of worship. It says Middle English. This is this is not a typo. This is how it was spelled. Worship, worthiness, respect, reverence. Read that part again. Worthiness, respect, and reverence. This is what worship means. Pay to a divine being. It says from Old English, where where I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's where Skype worthiness, so it's worthiness or respect from worth, or it's where worthy comes from, or worth Skype. So it's worth Skype. These are, these are a compound word. Worth Skype. Then it then it gives you what rank, office, dignity, and position. Right. These are all um, these are all uh, 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 attributes. I wouldn't even say at positions. Right of people that was receiving worship. 
Remember, all rise, right? The honorable such and such is just entered. And everybody stood up. When I was in the army, uh, I was in built, I was in boot camp, right? Uh, a drill sergeant was walking through. We all moved out the way. I ain't lying. I, you'd be tired. And you standing up getting ready to go eat lunch or dinner or breakfast and that drill sergeant walked through and he ain't stopping you got to get out the way and they would say at ease make way drill sergeant coming through somebody whoever saw the drill sergeant first was shout out real loud at ease make way drills if you was in the army you understood what i'm saying right at ease make way drill sergeant such and such coming through mm. and no matter what you was doing you move to the side so he can move and he can walk through. And I'm telling you, this dude was not stopping for nobody. He didn't he slow down into or me. anything. Huh? You said what? So he didn't slow down or anything, huh? He ain't slowed down at all. Right. And if you was in the way, you couldn't, your feet hurt, you tired, it's hot, you was gonna get ran over. Right? It goes to rank, office, dignity, position, right? Worthiness, right? Yahweh was worthy. Yahweh had the respect. Yahweh had the reverence. King David had the respect, the reverence, and, and worthiness. Moses, all these guys, right, were looked at as gods of the people who, who qualified for what? For worship. So now, hopefully, throughout this last hour and 15 minutes, you actually understand, right? You understand. How, how how worship can be loosely used if you don't have the context all right if you don't if you have the context move on to the next slide it says oh shoot this one here all right ot only doctrine ot only doctrine ot stands for old testament only a lot of our you know israelite brothers uh, uh are only subscribed to the old testament and they throw, let me just read this real quick. It says, many Israelites of the Old Testament reject the New Testament because of lack of understanding and lack of biblical understanding. This is very crucial and it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It says they throw the whole New Testament away because they cannot understand topics. Examples, Israelites having more than one savior, right? Right. You go through the book of Judges, you'll see Israelites having a plethora of saviors. So they say, well, I don't subscribe to the New Testament because uh, only God was going to save Israel. So who is this Yahweh Shai? Well, the scriptures tell you all through, the, all through Judges, there was a plethora of saviors. Moses was a savior, a Messiah. Joshua, right? All of them, right? Many intercessors slash mediators. Again, you'll find it in Judges where the, uh, Israel, had, uh, Israel had mediators and intercessors. Even Moses prayed on behalf of Israel. If it wasn't for Moses, Israel wouldn't even exist because the Most High was going to kill all Israelites and said, I'm going to establish my nation through you, Moses. And Moses prayed that the Most High would not do that. Right. Even uh, uh, Jeremiah told the most high God, I believe, let me just get it real quick. Jeremiah 14 and 20. Even Jeremiah had to step in and say, remember the covenant that you made with us, right? Uh, verse 22, verses Jeremiah 14, 22. Are there any among, no, 21. It says, do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember then it says, break not thy covenant with us. So even Jeremiah had to ask the Most High to not to not um, to remember the covenant that he made with the nation of Israel. So I'm going to read this part again. It says, examples, Israelites having more than one savior, many intercessors slash mediators and Christ being worshipped. That's the biggest thing that we come across with non-messianics or no new old testament only or torah to not only they don't like the fact that christ was being worshiped it says they reject everything because they do not understand worship as a result the doctrine of grace is non-existent so now how does a ot only operate with grace because they broke the they broke the sabbath day at one time in their life they've they've committed sin if you don't have a temple if you don't have a priesthood 
then then how do you how what, what are you teaching people? This, this is you see the the danger of of some of this doctrine, the danger, the 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 the, the hot water you can get into, right? If you going around saying that Christ is not the Messiah, then you're giving nobody hope of repentance. Salakia, so, how did they um, how did they teach like atonement or like repentance for sin? Right. So so if you watch this video we put out during Dreamville, we asked the the OT only brother who don't believe in the Messiah. He said, just just charity. That's it. Right. Charity is good. It says charity covers a multitude of sins, but it doesn't atone. It does. It just covers it. Right. It helps, but it doesn't wipe it clean. You needed some kind of blood offering sacrifice to uh, to atone for sins. It helps, right? Did King when King David committed adultery, you know, he fasted and prayed, and ultimately his son was taken. But you know, he said, I would have gave sacrifices if, if that would have worked. But even King David knew that somebody had to die for the for adultery, right? And it was ultimately it was his son. So you know, King David didn't go out there and, and give charity, he had all the money in the world. So charity is good, but you still got to have, there's still uh, some type of blood sacrifice. And, and for us, as believing Israelites, we believe that that, that, uh, that grace that we have, that atonement for our sins was Yahushua's sacrifice, right? But they throw Yahushua out, they throw the whole New Testament, they throw Paul's letters out because Christ was worshipped. Imagine that, right? It says they have no chance of repentance, no atonement for sins, which equals bad Bible and bad doctrine. You know how many people you, you lead off, you know, having them go off because of your lack of understanding? Well, Christ was worshipped, so I'm, I'm no longer going to believe in the Old Testament, I mean, the New Testament. These brothers are idolaters. They'll call you an idolater because I, oh, you're an idolater because you believe in uh, having more than one God. Right, come. You worship Jesus Christ. Right. We're gonna we're gonna address all this. I'm gonna go to the next slide. What was that? Next slide six. Make sure I'm not moving too far ahead. All right. Next slide. Next slide. Christianity, the uh, the the other side, right? So OT only is one side. Look at the look at Christianity. It says the doctrine of Christianity takes the word worship and immediately makes Christ the most high God, right? They rationalize this belief by believing only the most high God can receive worship. As a result, Christians make Christ equal with the most high, which is where you get a Trinity doctrine. Also, well, there's, there's a difference between the Trinity and oneness, but ultimately it's still off as hell, right? So you get oneness and, and the Trinity, all these things, right? And, and uh, Kazak, can you give me Deuteronomy 6 and 4? We're going to make sense of this. And we're going to show the OT only brother and your Christian brothers where they do err not knowing the scriptures. Again, OT only, they they throw away the old, I mean, the New Testament because Christ, we, we, you know, somehow Christ is the most high God because he received worship. And on the contrary, um, <laughs> Christianity makes Christ the most high God. Now we went through a couple precepts and showed King David getting worship. Is King, according to Christianity, according to you Christians out there, is King David also the most high God? Right, right. You know, according to King David, according to the uh Christianity, uh we who else uh we see get worship? Uh 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 the elders, right? Your elders got worship. Is that are they the most high God? No. No, there's different forms, there's different words for worship. We're going to get into that. So let's get Deuteronomy 6 and 4. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our God, is one Lord. You see that? So we only have one God that we get the highest form of worship to. And what I like to tell the, 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 the OT only non-messianics is, we don't we don't give Christ the most high God praise. We pray to God through Christ. He he makes our prayers acceptable. 
right? Remember, before, if you was in sin, God wasn't hearing your prayer, right? So you had to have an atonement for that prayer to ultimately be uh, to ultimately be heard, to be cleansed, to be to be accepted, an acceptable offering, because your prayer is your offering, right? You made that you made that um, that offering, whether it be a sacrifice, right? You were praying, you were asking for something, you were hoping for something. Only way it was going to get answered is if it was accepted, if it was clean, if it was a savory smell, if it was worthy. Christ makes that prayer worthy by His blood, death, burial, and resurrection. Right. So we don't pray to Christ and say, um, you know, all praises to Yahweh Shai. Right. We say all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, which is in the name of what? Yahweh Shai. Now that makes sense. Right. Now that now that's able to, you know, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, now you understand. Right. But, um, you know, OT, you know, OT, they don't they don't want to hear none of that. Right. They just want to have an excuse to, to not keep the commandments, right? Which is which is which is fine. Hey, all we can do is give the sense. Now, on the contrary, Christianity, they they so you know your Christians, they so off, they so they so uh, void of understanding that they understand that you pray in the name of Christ, who they would say the name of Jesus, but they don't understand that that, that Christ is carrying that prayer to God for it. He's the intercessor and that mediator. Right, he's making intercession. Matter of fact, let me get Hebrews 9 real quick. Let's see if it's there. Hebrews 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So Christ's blood, right? Allow allows you um, uh, to have your um, to be without spot before the Most High God, right? All right, so um, so so does that make sense? Ah, Khan, all praises, all praises, right? So again, the doctrine of Christianity is again a doctrine that can again have you thinking that Christ is God. So now you just broke Deuteronomy six and four because you have multiple gods receiving the same form of worship. All right, so let's get into these words for worship. All right, so here's the Old Testament words for worship all through the Old Testament. You have shakha, uh, right, meaning to depress, that is prostrate in homage, humbly. All right, so um, get me, give me Joshua 5 and 14. Watch this. We're going to get a few words. Right, a few words dealing with this word shaka. Shaka. This is Strong's H seventy eight twelve. Again, it means to depress. That is prostrate, prostrate in homage, humbly. Let's see if the since we're in the Old Testament, I would love an Old Testament only brother to understand what this means. Read what you got up. The book of Joshua, chapter five, verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of Yahweh, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face mm -hmm. to him and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Come, come. And that word is shaka, right? So, so Joshua bowed down to the angel of God. Right? So is Joshua in idolatry? No. I mean, these these uh OT only, but they OT only, they love Joshua. Right? They love him. Right? We love him too. We love our brother too. But he just got he he just he just paid homage and he humbly bowed down to him. The same way uh um uh, you bow down to your elder. Right, you bow down to a brother of yours. It ain't even gotta be an elder, it could be your own brother. Hey, Shalom, I, you know what I'm saying? You bow down to him, they don't make you an idol, an idolater. Give me Genesis 18 and 12. I'm gonna show you another brother that 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 uh used this word shaka. 
Genesis 18 and 12. The book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? No, that's not what I want. Damn, hold on. Hold on. Give me Gen uh, Genesis 19 and 1. The book of Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Mm -hmm. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. Mm -hmm. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. You see that? So even Lot did, you know, use that same word, Shaka, for the angels, right? That was going to destroy Sodom. Uh, Salaki, my fault. I said Genesis 18 and 12. It's 18 and 2. Come. That was me rushing through it. Uh, read uh, 18 and 2. Come. It's the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 2. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. You see that? So I guess Abraham, Father Abraham, was also a an idolater, right? <laughs> Hold on one second. Hold on one second. All right, Salaki, that was the brother. All right, so so read that again. Right, my bad. Verse two. Come, Genesis chapter eighteen, verse two. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. So you got three men, right? Three men standing by him. Come on. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. There you go. That's that word Shaka again, right? He bowed himself down to three men, right? He didn't worship him as he worshiped the Most High God. You don't see sacrifices, right? You don't see altars being built. You don't see altars being built for anybody but for the most high. All right. Very important. Very important. All right. The next word I want to get is, you see that next word is atsab, atsab. That's strong H6087. And it means to carve, fabricate, or fashion, worry, pain, or anger. All right. So I want to get a few of these, uh, these precepts. Um, Salakia, before we move forward, hold on. Let's get Leviticus 26 and 1. I want to I want to finish up Chicago quick because one thing I do want to make known is that the Most High can receive all forms of worship, but only a few words are designated only for Him. Right? I'm, I'm gonna say that again. I'm gonna try to make it clean when I say it. The Most High can receive all these forms of worship you see on this PowerPoint screen. He can He, he qualifies for Shaka, Atzab, Sagad, Kodad. Even when you go into the New Testament in the Greek. Proskuneo, the trail, the most high qualifies for all that, but only few of these words is designated only for the most high God. All right. So let's get Leviticus 26 and 1. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols nor graven image, neither rear up, rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it for i am yahweh your power you see that so even the most high was like hey you don't pay homage you don't bow down to any other uh, uh deity any other god all right um so i'm gonna show you where the most high is also getting this same word shakal let's get first chronicles 16 29 first chronicles 16 29 and, and ultimately, you know, this is uh, this is good to understand uh, uh, for the for the viewers that's coming in and you may come across a word here. Somebody may ask you a question there. All these things come up when you come in as well. Right. And, and 
if you're not careful, you can kind of question this whole scriptures, the whole Bible in its own, because you're not um, studying these things, right? Sometimes as teachers, we got to do a little bit of the, um, the work to help our new brothers and our new sisters come in and understand these points, right? And understand these points because ultimately, um, as you grow in this truth, it's your job to reach back and help the next brother, help the next sister uh, understand these things, all right? So let's get that uh, First Chronicles 16, and is this what I want, 29? Come, bring that out. Come, the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 29. Give unto Yahweh the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship Yahweh in the beauty of holiness. Now, how do we know this is talking about the most high? Well, it says Yahweh, right? So that, that gave it away. But you also notice that it said bring an offering, right? God. Bring an offering. You know, so it says give unto the Lord his due, due unto his name, bring an offering and come before him and worship the most high Yahweh and the beauty of holiness. Okay. So now we understand these is the, these these words, right? We understand um context is, is key when it comes to the etymology of words. Right. I heard brother say this a, a couple times. Context supersedes etymology. You can see that word Shaka. And if you start tagging that word to every single every time I see Shaka, if I'm if I'm um if I'm irresponsible and I'm going through Strong's and I'm seeing, well, every time I see Shaka and I see Strong's uh, 7812, I'm just going to tag that to the most high. No matter what's being said, now your, your whole doctrine's messed up because you'll start saying, um, well, Abraham gave this the same worship to these three angels. So that must be the most high God, right? Context helps you sift through all that. So, so, so the context, same with the uh, Gentile. Same thing with Gentiles, right? It's same. It's throughout the whole Bible, right? You start seeing Greek words, Hebrew words. You start tagging that and making a doctrine. We'll say Gentiles here. It say worship here, and it's the Hebrew word for worship. So I'm going to take it over here and make this also the Most High God. No, you're forcing it. You're forcing it. You have to have the context. And, and I was actually talking to the priest earlier today and we were talking about how christians are guilty of the things that they accuse us of they say we cherry pick scriptures but we really don't we just know that we, we get to the point right so when we go to these scriptures and we say we bring out x y and z we get right to the point we know the context but we get right to the scripture that we want right meanwhile the christians they'll just take one scripture and just blanket statement everything. Now we can eat pork because Mark 7. Well, the context tells you it was not about pork, right? So just things like that, right? We just got to watch out for it. All right. So now let's get this uh, second word. It says atsab, right? I'm going to read the, the definition again. It says carve, fabricate, or fashion. And it says worry, pain, or anger. So let's get this word. Uh, let's get the, the, the scripture that, that shows this. I want to get Jeremiah 44, 19. Jeremiah 44, 19. All right. And see, things like this is good. You, you're bored at home, right? You're sitting at home. Just start using these uh, tools that you have, whether it's a Strong's Concordance or a Blue Letter Bible or dictionary, whatever the case may be, and start researching these words. And then finding them in the scriptures and showing and and uh, the most I can can show you a lot of these uh, these uh, quote unquote um, uh, understandings, right? Just by you putting a little bit of work and a little bit of effort. All right. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter forty-four, verse nineteen. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven, and poured out drink offerings unto her. Did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Right, right. And the queen of heaven, right? Is that what I saw? Come. The queen of heaven, right, is what well, you would say uh, Ishtar. Where you get Easter from. Right? So go ahead, Ot. Verse 20. Oh, no, no. I thought you had to say something. No, that was it. That was it. 
right? But they made cakes to worship her, right? Talking about food, food, uh, uh, food offerings. All right, paying homage, right? Fabricating, fashioning. They were making idols, out, uh, making idols to the Queen of Heaven. That's crazy. Right, fancy that. All right, the next one, Sagad, Sagad. All right, this is a compound word. All right, you have Strong's 5456 and 5457. I mean, Slack, not a compound word. 5457 is what you would call a, um, a, uh, slip my mind, uh, a rendition of the word Sagad, right? It means to prostrate oneself or to fall down, right? To prostrate oneself or to fall down. So it's, it's almost like Shaka to depress, that is prostrate in homage humbly. This one is you prostrate, you kind of ball up, right? You, you get on the ground, you fall down. Um, so let's get a, a scripture real quick. I want to get uh, Isaiah 44, 19. Let's get that Isaiah 44, 19. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 19. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also... I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. Mm -hmm. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Mm -hmm. Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? See that? Should I, should I, Sagad, right? Prostrate down to the stock of a tree. And this goes into, again, that idol worship, right? Even when you go to Bell and the Dragon. Let me just pull that up real quick. Bell and the Dragon, chapter one, verse seven. And, and yeah, I, you know, I, I really would like to see this book being brought out a lot more frequently um, on the streets because there's a lot of history in this. All right. It says, this is Bell and the Dragon in the Apocrypha, chapter 1, verse 7. Then Daniel smiled and said, O king, be not deceived, for this is but clay within, brass without, and did never eat or drink anything. Right. So understanding, right, these idols that these other nations had, they really thought that they were eating food and sleeping and drinking. So they would put these, these foods, this, 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 uh, this food out there. They still do it today. You go to certain parts of, of Asia, right? And they, they actually, and even in India, East India, they're putting this food next to these tombstones where dead people are de decomposing and they're expecting the food to be eaten. And they're praying to these uh, deities, right? All right, and I want to get this uh, other one. Go ahead. I, I was just saying, no, that's pretty wild, man. No, it's 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 crazy, right? It's actually madness uh, for you to be sitting here thinking that you know this this uh, this food you're giving, and somehow this deity is coming out, or your 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 grandmother, your grandfather is coming from underground, coming out just to eat. And then they're going right back underground, like right. <laughs> that's that's you know crazy. What I'm saying? Hey, why? Hey, these heathens are, are different. Um, all right, I want to also get Daniel two and forty six. I'm gonna read it real quick. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face. Right, that's the word Sagad, and it says, and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. Now look at this. Nebuchadnezzar worshiped Daniel, right? And then commanded that everyone else should also offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. All right? So now you're looking at uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar um, putting Daniel as a god. It even gets better. Verse 47, the king answered unto Daniel and said, of a truth it is that your god is a god of gods. And a Lord of Kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal his seek this secret, right? So even Daniel, right, was able to interpret dreams, and Nebuchadnezzar looked at him as as a god, right? Worshipped him and and paid him homage, prostrated himself. You got a king. You got a. a, a it's almost like Joe Biden. 
the who you know one of these kings of of um america the rulers of america or even putin or some of these other um world leaders coming down to the israelite camp and and bowing down themselves to us all right it's going to happen revelation three and nine these other nations are going to worship us as well these christians don't understand that when you go to the new testament right let me get revelation three and nine See, the Christians don't, un it's not, it's foreign to them, right? They'll read this scripture or you read it to them, asking them what it means. And then they'll say, oh, well, it's taken out of context. <laughs> or they'll say, uh, it wasn't meant for us to understand that. So, you know, you know, uh, yeah, no, ain't nobody going to worship us. See how that word worship can destroy someone's doctrine? God. Right. Or you can make up a whole new doctrine just off the word worship. And that's not the only thing in the Bible. Right. It's all kind of things in the Bible where doctrines are created and made. So this is why he gave the sense to the Israelites. He gave us the sense to, to white, rightly divide the truth. All right. Let's get that Revelation three and nine. It's the book of Revelation, chapter three, verse nine. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. You see that? So even the uh, other nations, Amalek, right? Uh, the, the Ish, right? The Ish community. Um, even they're going to have to bow down, right? where you get the word proskuneo from. They're going to prostrate themselves, fall down, and worship the true children of Israel. And, and they're going to say, God loves y'all. Even when, um, what is that? I want to say uh, Zechariah 8. They're going to grab the skirt of him that's a Jew. You don't think that's going to come in a form of worship? We're going to go with, let's bring that out real quick. I'm going a little bit off uh, script. However, it, it, it all ties in together, right? It all comes back and it ties together on the point we're making. Uh, this is uh, he's, uh, this is Zechariah 8, 23. Thus said the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, excuse me, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. That's going to even come in other form of worship. We can go all through the scriptures, Isaiah 14, uh, uh, where, where you know they're going to rebuild the, the, the desolate, the desolate places, right? Verse 4, Isaiah 14 and 2, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors, right? Meaning, there's go, there's going to be a form of reverence and homage and and prostrating that's going to happen, right? They're going to bow down, right? Which leads us to this next uh, priest or uh, this next word, quadad, quadad, right? That's H sixty nine fifteen. All right, it means to bow down, to shrivel. Bend the body in deference, and then it says bow down, right? So let's get Genesis 24, 26. Genesis 24, 26. <laughs> hey, uh, 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 the scripture said, uh, ye are gods, right? You start telling your family, the Bible says I'm a god. Right, your mom, your father, your cousins—they don't know what's going on. They like, oh, this dude—he—he he crazy. He definitely—he's he, he bugging out. <laughs> he bugging out. These brothers got him thinking he's God. I remember, right. remember when Kanye said that. God he said somebody said, "Who do you think you are?" He said, "I just told you who I am—a God." And people don't understand that because they don't know the word God and worship and how these things can can mean different depending on the context. God. And even the slightest thing where you're you're reading the scriptures and you see God in all caps, right? Lowercase. They're not even paying attention to that. They're not paying attention to that. And yeah, exactly. Right. So 
So understanding these things, context is key. And then also, you know, you can't get so bent out of shape when you see worship. Oh, my God, they worship Jesus. Throw the whole Old Testament away. Right. <laughs> That's what happened. Don't, don't. They don't believe in none of that because the word worship. And then you start going into these understandings, these breakdowns. You start breaking down the word worship. You start going into uh, other people being worshipped. Now their whole logic and argument is blown up. God. For a lack, that's why the most I said what? My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Right? We don't we don't chase that knowledge anymore. Right? You let other brothers teach you and, and, and you don't learn for yourself. It's okay to learn under brothers, but you still have the burden on you to go and and uh, find out for yourself. Ask questions. Nothing wrong with asking questions. All right. Genesis 24, 26. Uh, bring that out. Uh. Cause the book of Genesis, chapter 24, verse 26. And the man bowed down his head and worshiped Yahweh. And did what? And worshiped Yahweh. You see that? So the man, right? That word Kodad, right? He bowed down his head and worshiped the Most High. Right? Shriveled up. Right? Again, the Most High qualifies for all forms of worship. Right? He qualifies for all that. He's the Most High God. All right? Come, come. So let's move on. Let's move on. I got a few more and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. All right, so here's the he here's the Greek words for worship in the New Testament. The first one is proskuneo. Proskuneo. This is probably the more common word used. All right, you got proskuneo, sebomai, doxa, latreia, eusebo, and ethelothreskia. Right, but I want to focus mostly on proskuneo and latreo. Right. Proskuneo and the trail. These two words you're going to find more than more than likely um, and more commonly in the old in the New Testament. Okay, the Greek word proskuneo, and this is a compound word right here, uh, G 43, 4352 from forty three fourteen. It says probably a derivative of twenty nine sixty five, meaning to kiss like a dog, licking the hand of the master. To fawn or crouch to that is literally or figuratively prostrate oneself in homage, do reverence or adore. So this is the same. This Greek word would actually um, uh, go back in the Hebrew to shaka, to prostrate. You see that? The word prostrate here, right? That's where proskuneo will come from, right? To prostrate. Now it means to kiss like a dog. You know how you have a new dog or a new baby or uh, something that's cute or you adore it or not even like a man uh, will, will adore his wife or a wife will adore her husband. As a matter of fact, when we went through the, the New Testament words for worship, when it came to a woman worshiping her husband, the word you're going to see there is proskuneo. Okay, very important. Very important. All right, you're going to see proskuneo. All right, so I want to get a few scriptures on proskuneo just to get some, 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 you know, what it looks like, an example of what it looks like, how it feels, you know, what it, what is, what it hit, you know, how it hitting, right? How's that hitting? So let's get uh, Acts 10 25. Watch this, Acts 10 25. I'm going to show you proskuneo uh, in, in, in real life time, right? It's the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. And worshipped yeah. him. And worshipped him. Proskuneo. So you'll see Peter, right, being worshipped by Cornelius. Now, was Cornelius going to build an altar for Peter? No. Did, did, did Cornelius sacrifice animals? For him, no, right? Did he burn incense and build a temple for Peter? No, right? He just gave him, he just showed him love. That's what Proskuneo is, right? Showed him love, right? And uh, again, 
brothers don't do this um enough so it's foreign it's foreign it'd be like it'd be foreign to, to black hispanic and native american men to show this type of love to brothers because esau got us so messed up that it's almost weird to to allow another brother to to big up another brother to big up your sister right that's right Con. that's right you see what i'm saying now let's get matthew two and two let's get matthew two and two let's get another form of proscaneo and and mind you only time you're going to see christ receive worship that greek word is proscaneo very important very important again because there's doctrines being made off this word right start worshiping christ as if he's god read matthew 2 and 2. it's the book of matthew chapter 2 verse 2. Mm -hmm. saying where is he that is born king of the jews for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. You see that? To come to worship him. Right? Get verse 11. Same chapter. Come. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. Mm -hmm. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. You see that? So somebody may say, well, well, they gave him alms, right? Yeah, they gave him alms. But but the point is, right, when it comes to that word proskuneo, right, proskuneo, again, is, is, is going down to reverencing or to prostrate oneself and you're giving alms. But again, the big thing is you don't see sacrifices. You don't see uh, 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 temples being erected and built, right? It just goes to a gift, right? I Shoot, I give my wife gifts. My wife gives me gifts. I give brothers gifts, right? Uh, uh, brother gave me a gift, right? I thanked him by by what? Prostrating myself. Hey, yo, thank you, brother. You know what I'm saying? Salakia, thank you. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. He gave me a gift. That's an alms. That doesn't make me the most high God. Very, very tricky when it comes to that if, you, if you're not really uh, understanding, right, these words, right? And again, Revelation 3 and 9. That's another word for proskuneo, right? The other nations, right? The Ish people, they're going to have to come and worship, right? So let's move on to the next word, sub Sabomai, right? That's uh, G4576. It says, middle voice of, apparent, of an apparently primary verb to revere, that is adore, devout religious worship. Sabomai, right? Moving on, do doaxa. That's 1391 from the place of 1380, glory in wide application, literally or figuratively, objectively or subjectively, dignity, glory, honor, praise, and worship. All right. I want to get Luke 14 and 10 real quick. Uh, Salakia, um, Kazak, can you get Matthew 5, 15 and 9? Matthew 15 and 9. All right. Um, get, read what you got. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 9. Uh-huh. Red letters. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Mm-hmm. That's it on that? Yeah. Come. come, come. You see that? So that's that word, uh, uh, sabomai, right? In vain, and that's the word adore, right? So in vain, they 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 they. It's almost like fake love, right? Fake love. Hey, you know, hey, you was, hey, you the man, but you really don't mean it, right? You remember Bishop from Juice, right? That, right. that fake love, or what about Rico from uh, Paid in Full? He was showing Paid fake love. That's right. Right. Yeah. In vain, they adore me in vain, right? And that happens. You know, you know, you got a lot of haters. That's how you know we Israelites, the amount of haters that a brother gets when he's, you know, in this in this case, the Messiah. They were still showing him fake love. This is Luke 14 and 10. It says, but when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher than 
then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. All right. So, and that's that word, uh, uh, do, 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 doxa, doxa. All right. That's doxa. The next word is Latreya. That's G3000, right? Also known as Latris. To minister to God, that is render religious homage, serve, do the service and worship. Now, what's what's great about this word, Latreya, is only the Most High God receives Latreya. Only Yahweh distinctly receives this word. No other, no one, no one, no one, no one receives Latreya. Okay. And oh. you see that it says to minister to God, that is render religious homage, right? Serve, do the service and worship. Now we went into earlier that service, you know, of course, under that word service, you're going to get sacrifices. You're going to get temples being built. You're going to get incense being burned, right? All these things that only the most high God received on the righteous right hand side, right? We know Solomon did it on the left hand side, but on the right hand side, right? All these things the most high received. All right. So I want to get a precept with this real quick. Let's get Matthew 4 and 10. Baba Kashar, Matthew 4 and 10. And while you're getting that, I'm going to tell another quick story. Story time with, with, with Ra'am, right? You know, I like to bring these stories out. But um, bring it out. I know, right? So when we go out there and teach on Friday nights, there's a Christian group. I'm not sure their name, but there's a Christian group. Uh, I believe that they're like reform addicts or whatnot, just trying to like, you know, uh, uh, do, you know, you know how Esau does. But regardless of the fact, um, you know, I had a conversation with the, uh, I guess, the head of the church one night, and and he didn't know this. He didn't know that there's other words for. He knew proskuneo, right? He 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 called himself being somewhat studied. He knew proskuneo, but I said there's other words for worship besides proskuneo, because of course he's saying that you know Christ is the Most High God. He's a, he's Trinitarian. And he, he used that word proskuneo and said, you know, you see that? They worship Christ. And then I told him, you know, there's another word that only the Most High God qualified and received, and that's this word Latreya. All right? He, he You know, he of course, he didn't know it. And, um, you know, every time I see him, I try to have him answer that question. You know how it is, because out on that street, they ain't trying to deal with that 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 scholarship, right? Right, God. They All right, so let's get this. They, they talk around the circles, it seems sometimes. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's the uh, uh, you know, in boxing, you dance, they say you're dancing, right? Right, you're running. Well, that's what they're doing, right? They they dodging those blows, they don't they don't want that. They they'll muck up the argument and, and things, which is fine, which is fine because he knows and I know, right, that that word Latreya, you know, he wasn't ready for that word, and that and that's that was key again mm. because, like we said. These doctrines are built off lack of understanding. And your lack of understanding based off a doctrine that's not legit, ultimately you'll lose your crown. You'll lose your shot at, your shot at salvation. All right? Which is why this is probably a, a, a one of the more important lessons that it seems, it seems small, right? Worship. I know what worship is. Everybody knows worship. Well, Understanding that moving forward, now we got to start checking and, and dotting every I and crossing every T when we study these words. All yeah, right, so let's get that word. This is pretty heavy, y'all. Calm, calm. Let's get the the water, King. All praises to the Most High. Uh, all praises. Give me uh, get that Matthew uh, four and ten. It's the book of Matthew, chapter four and verse ten. Then saith Yahweh unto him. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did, Yah did Christ say, worship me and the Father and the Holy Spirit right here? La ah. No, right? And that word for worship is Latreya. So again, like we established, only Yahweh is going to get this word. This is the highest 
form of worship in the Greek lexicon. This is the highest form of worship when it comes to the Most High. Read, read it again, because uh, look at what Yahweh said. Come, book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 10. Then saith Yahweh unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Yahweh is saying only Yahweh gets the word Latreya. That's that's literally, you know, that's literally what he what he's saying. Now, now, of course, we understand that this might have been spoken in real time in Hebrew, but of course it was uh, uh, uh codified, right? And, and it might have been codified in the Hebrew. There's still some in, new information coming out, but in the excuse me, the earliest manuscripts will probably be in the Greek, right? So it says. Uh, uh, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt Latreya, Yahweh thy Elohim, or thy Elohim, and him only shalt thou serve. Only he gets that word, Latreya. Only the Most High gets that, no one else, right? Even Yahweh shall commemorate and, and establishes that when he said, Only Yahweh shall, uh, only Yahweh gets this word, all right. All right, let's move on to the next one. Eusebo, that's, 20, that's G2151 from 2152, to be pious, that is towards God, to worship towards parents, to respect, to support, to show piety, right? So we're talking about respect, all right? Respect, respect, respect. That's another form of saying, you know, I, I, I got love for you. I worship that brother, right? So now the word worship ain't so scary no more, right? After going through these words, you start seeing the word worship, you're not spooked anymore. You're not saying, wait a minute, Christ was worshiped. Paul was worshiped. Peter was worshiped. Uh, 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 Abraham was worshiping uh, these three angels. Joshua worshiped this angel in Joshua 5 and 14. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Sarah, right, called her husband Lord. Abigail was calling and bowing down to David. Now it's not so scary to have this conversation on worship, right? Because we got to go into the understandings of this word. So let's get that in um, uh, Acts 17, 23. You might be on uh, mute. It's the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Salakia, 23, okay. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, mm -hmm. whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. You see that? So even so, like I said, the most I gets all these forms of worship, right? But the one that belongs to him specifically is Latreya. But you see him also get Eusebo. Right to the unknown God, right? Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, I declare unto you. All right. So we'll leave that at that. We'll table that. The last one is F. This is a hard word to describe to, to say Ethel Ethel Ethlothreskia. Ethlothreskia, right? From G2309 and 2356. Voluntary, arbitrary, and unwarranted. Piety that is sanctimony will worship. Now, these definitions you can get from your Strong's Concordance. All right. These are words and definitions you can get from your Strong's Concordance. All right. So let's get Colossians 2.23. So I want to show some biblical usage, right? As we define them, I also want to just show how they're used, who's using them, and then we can. And when you get a chance, ah, you know, brothers, when you get a chance, go through, fact check it. See if you can find uh, a, a mistake here and there, and then we can break we can break it. But yeah, this uh, Latreya, uh, hey, yeah, you ain't gonna get past that, right? You ain't gonna get past that, and we're gonna get into a little bit more history, and then we'll close it down, right? We'll close it up. So um, let's get that Colossians two twenty three out. Come, it's the book of Colossians, chapter two, verse twenty three. 
which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. All right. You see that? So just a, another word right there. But again, it says, and will worship and humility, right? And yeah, uh, that, that word piety, that is sanctimony, will worship, right? Voluntarily, right? You, you know, you can have that same uh, spirit when it comes to just your, your daily life, right? You can you can have that uh, humility, that humbleness at your house, right? So these, these forms of, they translate it into worship, but these have their own separate Greek words, their own separate definitions. And then the translators translate it into the word worship or bowing down or reverence. All right. Uh, all right. So that's the that's the, the definition part. All right. Again, go back through here. The beautiful thing is this is pre-recorded. So you can pause it, take these notes, right? Write down these strong concordance numbers, go back, read, check through it, fact check it, the whole nine. All right. We're going to move on to the next slide. I got a few more left, and then that'll be it. All right. Council of Nicaea, 324 AD. Who knows about the Council of Nicaea? It was just me and you on here. I thought Ephraim was on here. Uh, uh, so, Kazak, you, um, like, how, how do you, like, like what do you, you, you've heard of this council, correct? I uh have. -huh. Come, 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 come. So, so when it comes to this, there's a couple councils that took place, but this is probably the more popular one. Um, and and you know, you're probably saying, well, why is he bringing up the Council of Nicaea? Well, this is it, right? So it says many debates and councils of Christ's deity and relationship with the Most High. One of the one of the purposes of the first Nicene Council was to unify doctrine of civilians by establishing if Christ was fully God or subordinate to God, very, very, very important. Was Christ the most high God or was Christ subordinate to God? Why is this important, right? Because again, Constantine and a lot of these Roman, um, these Roman early church uh, uh, fathers by 324, um, a lot of the early church fathers was dead and gone, right? So now you got the gospel or this book going into the hands of other people. The idea was to unify, right? To unify uh, uh, pagan the paganism of Rome and the early Christian belief, right? Which is widely spreading and widely granting, gaining attraction and becoming more and more popular. By 324, this was full-fledged popularity, right? It says, the idea was to mix paganisms Paganism and the records of the Israelites to unify the people. As a result, you got Catholicism. And then, of course, what I put in parentheses was the Trinity, you know, geared towards, uh, we know, of course, there was a lot that happened during these councils, but the result is a Trinitarian doctrine, meaning uh, God, God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit being co-equal and co-eternal. That's very important. Because you'll say, oh, prove the Trinity exists. And then they'll say in the beginning was the word, right? They'll go to John 1 and 1, or they'll go to 1 John. Um, that three that, there's three that bear record. What's that? 1 John uh, 5 and 7, right? And they'll say that's the Trinity right there. See? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But again, the Trinity is not that. The Trinity is Father, Son, Holy Spirit being co-equal and co-eternal, Right? Uh, Kazak, can you give me Deuteronomy 6 and 4? Uh, because the Bible don't agree with the Trinitarian doctrine. Right? The Bible oh. don't agree with that. Christ just said that the Most High God receives Latreia, Matthew 4 and 10. So they can't be co-eternal, co-equal, but this council, the result of the council, is, uh, I think there was two of these councils, the first and the second Nicene council, Right? Was a, as a result, you have a whole doctrine that's anti-God and anti-Messiah, anti-Antichrist. Con and Slack here, really quick. Mm -hmm. With the understanding, you you know that uh, Yahweh, being ancient of days, right, 
Right, and, then, right. and then you have in the beginning was the word. So how can you be ancient of days and in the beginning? Ancient of days right. has no beginning. That's right. That's right. That's a, that's a heavy point. That's a heavy point, right? If, if the most high God is the ancient of days and in John 1 and 1, they give you a origin or a beginning of Christ, then just off those scriptures alone, excuse me, just off, just off those alone, you just you just excluded Christ from being the ancient of days, the Probably. beginning, like when he supersedes time, he's not subject to time. Christ is, the angels is, right? Everything is subject to time except for who? The most high. Excellent point. Uh, excellent point. Cons, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter six and verse four. Con. Here, O Israel, Yahweh, our God, is one Lord. You see that? So, so now we don't have time. We don't have place for the Trinity according to Deuteronomy 6 and 4, right? Antinomianism is another uh, result of this, um, of this council, right? Now the law, antinomianism is the laws are done away with. No more, no more law, right? I no longer have to keep the laws of Moses anymore. Now I can be a heathen. I can be a, 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 a sexual deviant, a pedophile. Uh, uh, an adulterer. I can do all these things because, hey, there's no more. There's no more law, right? And of course, replacement theology, right? Which is all nations get salvation. This is what Catholicism subscribes to. Those three things. That's the big things that we we debate when it comes to Christians and Catholics and Protestants and whatever, right? The Trinitarian doctrine, right? God in three persons being co-equal, co-eternal. Same power, right? Antinomianism, right? Or a lawless society. You don't got to keep the laws anymore. And all nations now get salvation. And this comes from what? Uh, the, the Catholic doctrine, which was uh, uh, the origins of the doctrine goes back to 320, 324, 325 AD, Council of Nicaea. Their first attack was to make Christ the same as the Most High God. Which is which is why we got to go back and and clean this stuff clean this stuff up as as Israelites. We got to clean up all the all the confusion, right? All right, move on to the next slide. All right, I'm gonna continue. So then the Council of Nicaea content, continued. There's a man named Arius. All right, you ever heard of Arius? La I, La okay, Arius. I highly recommend study this brother, Arius, 31 AD, was okay. an elder that taught against the Bishop of Alexandria. Arius disagreed with Alexandria's teachings that Christ, the son of Elohim, or God, right, existed eternally being generated eternally by the Father. Instead, Arius believed Christ was not always around existing, Believes Christ is numbered among other created beings, which is what me and you just said, right? He had a he had a beginning, right? Highly exalted, but still a creation. Now, this word "highly exalted," right? You can also say what? Also say worship, worshipped, right? Highly worshipped, highly exalted, but still a creation. So he got some. He got proskuneo, right? You'll see Christ getting that exalted, right? Worshipped. But he, he doesn't get Latreya. So even though Christ was highly exalted, but nevertheless, he was still a creation, meaning someone had to create him. Right? If someone had to create him, then the Trinity is, is destroyed, right? They can't be co eternal, co equal. All right? That's right. By 321 AD, Arius was labeled a heretic, right? by a small council, this council of Nicaea, they kicked Arius out, right? He was dismissed. Arius taught Christ was son of God created. There's a term called Arianism, right? The Messiah was less than the most high, but more than a human, still divine, but not the most high. So, so as Israelites, right? I would lean more towards the side of Arius or Arianism versus uh what you would say you know uh what the christian or the catholic doctrine is today you, you kind of lean more towards what he's saying 
which is why he was kicked out. It's no different than we out there on the streets and they try to mute the mic or they try to take the mic and give citations. They want to suppress the word of God. Right now, remember, uh, um, uh, uh, man, I'm calling him Charlemagne. What's the guy? Uh, Constantine. Constantine had an agenda. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bring all these people in. There's war. There's, 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 there's violence in my, in my, you know, in my, in my empire, right? In the Roman Empire, right? During that time, there was a lot of, you know, fighting, civil wars to unify everybody. You had to have a universal doctrine, which is where you get Catholicism from, right? Universal, meaning everybody, right, is under this. And this brought peace. So he had definitely an agenda. Unfortunately, Arius, or fortunately for us, Arius wasn't really going with the agenda. His job, his idea was we're going to bring this truth out. And Christ ain't the most high God, but he's still an important person. He still qualifies for worship, but he's not, he doesn't get the highest form of worship, which is why we start this whole lesson off explaining that there's degrees and tiers of worship that you can't just dismiss, right? You can't just dismiss it, right? There's different levels to worship, which is why it was important for us to go through each word first and foremost to give you the different tiers and different stratifications of that word worship. All right. So you see Christ was 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 important, right? He was still a creation. Of course, they called him a heretic and kicked him out because he was going against the plan of the agenda of of Constantine. All right. Uh that that that's it on that. All right. And then the last one, all right, this is the word monolatraism, all right? Mon monolatraism, right? So, you know, when you was in seventh grade, sixth grade, you heard about terms like polytheistic and monotheistic. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, calm. Right. So yeah. polytheistic was the belief of many gods, right? That's what we all grew up. It was like, yeah, the belief of many gods, polytheistic, polytheistic, right? Um, but, but, right, hold on. Uh, yeah, but. Um, and then monotheistic was the belief in one God. So when I was, you know, seventh grade, I'm going to Christian church. I'm like, yeah, we monotheistic, right? We believe in only one God, right? Then I came into this truth and I came across this word monolatraism, right? Which is uh, different, right? So this is the, it says the exclusive worship of one God without excluding the existence of others. Very important. Very important. I'm going to read it again. The exclusive worship, the exclusive worship of one God. Very important. This 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 first couple words right here, right? Exclusive. Like that. Exclusive worship of one God. Highlight that yellow. Meaning we only worship exclusively one God without excluding the existence of others. I'm going to put that in a different color, right? without excluding the difference, the, the existence of others. Meaning we understand that there are multiple gods, right? We just read about Solomon self, you know, building up temples for one. And we started this, uh, the lesson off with though there be gods many, right? So we understand that there are other gods out there, but we exclusively worship Yahweh. We give him Latreya. Right, mono latreism. I like that. All right, latreism. You see that root word, latreia. Let's highlight that. Let's give it a blue. No, I don't like that blue. Hold on. Let's give it a nope. Well, you get what I'm saying. I'm over here. I'm pressed on that. That's fine. We'll keep it a blue. I don't know what's going on with my cursor. No. All right. So you see that? It says mono, the root word, latreism, right? Which is where you would get latreia. So the highest form of worship, right? So there's one. Mono means one, right? So one form of worship. 
and ism is the practice of, right? So one high form of praise, right, goes to the most high God, Abraham, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Example, many portions of the Bible express monolatre. For example, when Yahweh declares that he is a jealous God who banishes all other gods from his presence, the author of this commandment does not deny that other gods exist, but prohibits worship of them. Let's get that Deuteronomy 5 and 7. Come on. Let's get that Deuteronomy 5 and 7. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. So the Most High even understands that there are other gods out there. Right? Very important. Very important. This is not monotheism. Theism, so, so monotheism, right? Monotheism is another compound word. Mono, meaning one. And theism goes back to theos, which is God, right? That's the Greek word for God, theism. So you have one God, monotheism. We, 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 don't, we don't subscribe to monotheism because, again, and this might be a little bit much, but understanding what, what we're saying is there's one, there's one God that we worship above anything else. That's monolatreism. Monotheism is the idea that only there's only one God and his name is Yahweh, right? But but you don't you don't believe that there was a God named Moloch. You don't believe that there was a God named uh Chemosh, right? Or or Ishtar. You know what I'm saying? You don't believe in that. We don't believe, we don't praise them, we don't worship those gods. However, we understand that other nations reverence those gods as their gods, Baal or Baal, right? We understand that those gods were were were, were worshipped and and deified by other nations. So yeah, those those statutes and, and those 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 temples did exist. Jupiter exists in, in the minds of other people, not not in real life, not a real there's not a real man named Jupiter walking around. You get what I'm saying? I, Come on. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might get that simple Israelite. Oh, your house can't believe in a whole bunch of other gods. No, we don't worship those other gods, but we know other people paid homage and sacrifice to their own gods. That's <laughs> monolatreism. Khan, Shalak here. Um, I don't know the verse offhand, so forgive me for that, but isn't there a verse where it mentions not speaking the names of other gods? Khan, 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 Khan. Yep, yep. So, so why would that be even brought up if there weren't other gods to speak of? Right, exactly. Uh, so, exactly, exactly, exactly. That's a good point. And even, even when you go into the Maccabees, right, we were what? We, were, we, we had people that were going down, worshiping other gods to, to, to get along with the other nations. They went along to get along, right? That's a, that's a good point, right? So, yeah, exactly. So you, you speak in the name of other gods. Now, again, when it comes to those speaking those, those names of other gods for the purpose of edification. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We'll say it. But, you know, you ain't walking around, you know, saying these names in the back of your mind. You know what I'm saying? Come on, come on, that's, come on. That's, that's totally different. But in the in in idea and in in the, the, the sense of edification. Right. We only brought those names out to prove a point, right? But that's a heavy point, right? So so where are we at? Deuteronomy 5 and 7, read verse 8. Verse 8, thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Mm -hmm. Verse, Verse nine. 9, thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. What? Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve that? them. So real quick, it said, it said, thou shalt not bow down thyself. No proskuneo, no prostrate, right? None of those words that we was going into, right? 
you know, in, in any form of worship that we that we covered, they're not bowing down to them to worship. Come on. For I, Yahweh, thy power, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And how do you hate God? And by this context, is worshiping other gods. Mm. Right? I'm going to show you what uh, the Most High said, right? Jeremiah 2.28. Hey, this is the beautiful thing about the Most High is it's almost like you're in a relationship, right, um, with a, 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 a love, right? You know, um, when you was, you know, young, you know, you young or, you, you know, you see brothers that, you know, got caught up, you know, he got another girlfriend across town, God. right? You know what I'm saying? What she say? She get jealous and she said, you better call her. Go call her. You know what I'm saying? You. X, Y, and Z, you need, oh, you need, you need some money, you know what I'm saying? You need some uh a ride to the call that other girl you was dealing with, or the man be like, call that one dude that you was, you know, you know, cheating on me with, whatever the case may be. The most high looks at it the exact same way. Look at what he says in Jeremiah 2:28. It says, But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. So the Most High is telling, you know, the Israelites, where are your gods that you erected and you built up to to and 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 made temples and sacrifices and altars? Let them come and save you from the Babylonians. Let them come and save you from the Greeks, right? And, and that was the most high really just proving a point because them other gods ain't going to, so like, you know, they ain't going to worship you. So like what Kazak was going into, even the most high identified that other gods were out there, right? Have no other gods before me. There's a difference between mono, monolatraism, monotheism, and of course, poly, polytheism, right? So, did you want to add anything on that as we, we're going to shut it down? Well, uh, no, that's, oh, that's, praises. That's, praises. Oh, praises. Praises. So ultimately, um, you know, I mean, let me stop sharing my screen real quick. Uh, here we do. Let me do this. Boom. Right. So ultimately, right. Um, all praise to the most high for that, for that lesson. All right. Um, but um, again, it was, it was our job to, to literally come out here and, 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 you know, go through that word worship, showcase the different types of worship, the importance of worship. Hopefully, um, you know, uh, uh, it was edifying. Um, ultimately, uh, uh, you know, the idea for our for our doctrine is to study these words, right? When you get a chance, study these words. You know, you're not really looking at it as a as a spooky thing. Oh, it's a scary. You know, no, 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 no. You gotta just understand the the context of scriptures, right? really start to go in there and divide some of these words understand these words understand this um this uh this this bible man these definitions you got a bunch of tools at your disposal whether it's a dictionary strong's concordance just read 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 you got precepts you got archaeology you got google you got uh books primary source books you got a whole lot um of of, of resources right and um, yeah, man, I mean, ultimately this was hope, this was edifying. Um, we're gonna shut it down after that. And um, I'm gonna try to see if uh, Mahar can come back on here. Uh, Khan, he, um, Salaki, he sent me a message to let him know when we were done. Khan, Khan. And, let me uh, call him real quick, hold on. Khan. All right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, other than that, man, we're probably going to some um uh some some uh events coming up for your house camp. So uh we just did a good uh uh trip to um to Washington DC, right? Uh um for the uh the camp with the house of David, Marshal Yasha Allah. All right, so shout out to the elders, the brothers that came out that taught, that read. Uh, that came to DC and and did that that nice rebuke uh, uh, against the White House. 
Um, let's see. We just uh, had our new moon, which is great. What we got coming up? Okay, come, come. He just texted me back. Um, and then, of course, what we got coming up uh, this month is got the summit coming up not too soon. I mean, not too long from now, right? You said oh, the summit? Yeah. So if, if you out there in July um, 27th, we're going to be in Delaware for the summit, which is going to be a good um, a good summit. Um, you know what I'm saying? So please definitely, but definitely come out um, and, and bring your families. This is a really good family event uh, organized by Marshall Ayasha Allah. Various other camps will be in attendance. So definitely, um, you know, come out and support the brothers uh, out there doing the work of the Lord. Um, I mean, we're in the middle of summer, so it's, it's pretty much, uh, hey, we just chilling, trying to beat the heat. All right. And then uh, other than that, as we come into the fall, you'll start uh, seeing us do more um, uh, high holy days that's coming in. You got atonement, trumpets, tabernacles, which is my favorite uh, high holy day. And then, of course, um, we'll start gearing it down towards the winter for uh hanukkah also known as the feast of dedication and um yeah man that that's that's gonna be it hopefully we get this deliverance before then the salvation before then and um yeah if brothers want to uh uh add anything we're gonna shut it down but ultimately um you know thank you for coming in to war zone wednesdays um if you got any questions if you want to uh come and uh ultimately uh either join the camp or be a part of the camp just uh inbox uh us at on our youtubes um you know we'll be able to respond adequately and uh thoroughly for you um, if you have questions concerns hey reach out to us um you know we're, we're open for any biblical dialogue debates um things of that nature so um you know with that being said we're going to go ahead and, and uh, close this thing out. We want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High. We say, call halal. We say, all praises, all praises go to the Most High and the Most High only. We say, call halal, but now we Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. With that, we say, Shalom.